All right, so next up, um, Git is hard in ways that I have forgotten it's hard. Um, and I think this happens with any tool and Git is just like a particularly complex one where you use it for a while, you sort of forget all the rough edges and then you start teaching and you see like student after student hit exactly the same problems that you had forgotten were problems. Like, oh, it's like your first merge conflict, your first cherry pick, your first, I feel like my repo is exploding and I have no idea what's going on. And until you build those mental models, you're just totally lost at sea. So I'm really excited that this next group just completely dove into the bubbling witch's cauldron of Git um, and made a tool to make Git and what's going on inside of it more um, accessible and easier to use. So here we have Git It Done. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name is Ariana, and these are my incredible teammates, Priya, Lena, and Emily. And together for our capstone project, we created a graphical user interface for Git called Get It Done. And with Get It Done, you can visualize any GitHub repository as a directed acyclic graph. And common Git actions that we would normally use the command line for, uh, you can implement in our application with just the push of a button. We decided to create a Git GUI because we found that using the command line for Git was a little opaque and we wanted a way to visualize our actions and just see what's going on. So you can see any local repository and see any branch uh, represented in different colors. Um, commits are represented as nodes and uh, edges are directed along from a parent commit to all of its children. I'm going to hand it off to Priya to who is going to talk more about the functionality of the app. Thank you, Ariana. Our app can load both small and large repos. What I mean by small repos are the file structure may not be complicated. In case of large repos, the file structure can be complicated and you might have more number of branches. In both the cases, visualizing your repo in graphical format will help you a lot. Now, once your repo is loaded, in your sidebar, you can see the current file you're working on, any changes that you have made, anything to save that is to commit, anything to stash that is to remove, the local branches and the remote branches. Now say you have anything to save, then you can give a commit message and hit the commit button. By doing so, the graph gets regenerated with the current information as the node. On click of the node, you'll get the commit SHA, that's the ID, the commit message, the author and date and time. In this way, you have saved it locally. Now, in order to save it remotely, that is a repo in your GitHub, you can push the push button. Then all your data gets reflected in your GitHub. Now you have saved both locally and remotely. Now I would like to hand over to Lena who would explain about checkout branches. Thank you, Priya. So let's say you want to check out a branch. All you have to do is simply click the checkout button where you'll see a list of your local and remote branches. Once you check out the branch, the graph will be rendered in a different color so you know that you're in now in a different branch. Once you do whatever work you want to do in that branch and you save it and it's working fine, you can also merge it back in with master. When you then check out the master branch, you'll see the commits you made on that branch reflected in master. Other functionality that we have in our app is cloning. Uh, cloning a, a remote repo, fetching, um, stashing, and pulling. Um, throughout the process of integrating all this functionality, we went from familiar Git, Git users to expert users who knew a lot of the inner workings of Git and GitHub. Now I'm going to pass it on to Emily, who will talk about the challenges we faced and additional functionality we'd like to add going forward. Thanks, Lena. We used a lot of new technology in our stack. Uh, the app is a desktop app, so it was built in Electron, and we also used two asynchronous NPM libraries, Node Git and Simple Git, in order to talk to Git and make modifications to repos. To build the graph, we used a library called React Graph Viz to render repos as directed acyclic graphs. Um, one of the challenges we faced was sort of balancing execution and actual code writing with learning all these new frameworks and libraries. Um, and some of the features that we kind of talked about editing out, uh, we had a fully functional feature to look at branches without actually checking them out, but we realized that that gives users the dangerous opportunity to be on the wrong branch making changes uh, without realizing it. We also had auth built in for Git, but we realized that most Git users will already have SSH pre-configured locally, so they can already push and pull to GitHub. 
Um, and moving forward, some of the things we'd like to implement, uh, we'd like to render all branches simultaneously on the graph, and we'd also like to have a little more interactivity with GitHub, such as being able to make a pull request uh, from within the app, and just more sort of collaborative work like that. So we are deployed for download. Um, check us out at getitdonegui.github.io slash download. Thank you so much for listening. All right, well, that's, that was awesome. If you have problems with the Git, you can vote for Git GUI. I will, I will tell you, um, I think Git is one of those things where it's like, once you get it, it is really hard to see a world where you don't get it, but even when you get it, you don't fully get it. Um, but the, the thing is, yeah. like, it's interesting, like, you, I've seen both beginners and developers struggle with Git. And um, I saw a tweet recently by John Carmack, the famous, like, creator of Doom, he was like, people think I'm a genius, but they've never seen me try to do a Git merge. And so it's like, <laughs> there's no there's no boundary to where Git can, can confuse you. So just where they're, I mean, the fact that they got that visualization going, all the Git tools, that's, in, that's incredible progress. And um, I remember it was, I think actually less than a year ago um, that I learned about interactive rebasis. And when someone showed it to me for the first time, I thought they were a wizard. I was just yeah. like, this is insane. Yeah, yeah, but I think Rebase is one of those tools where it's like, it, like I mean, two-edged sword, but I think it's more of like a, a nuclear bomb for your things. Like, it's great <laughs> if you can dynamite exactly where you want to go, but I've seen many people, uh, <laughs> including myself, confuse themselves endlessly with Rebase. I, I've definitely got Once you get addicted to Rebase, you just can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, can't think of any other. I mean, this is one of those projects that, um, like, we saw some projects that look... Uh, that look easy but were hard to implement this one looks hard to implement and probably was hard to implement um and so yeah it's good yep. well done <laughs>